Hello, everybody. Welcome to Trials of the Watchers. Uh, end of season one as of, what day is it? May 30th, 2020. Greatest year humanity's ever had. Just kidding. Um, so, this won't be the official end of season one. This is the first end of season one. So, what that means is, as you can see, grayed out at the bottom under Doctor Strange is Hulk. Because we know Hulk's coming, Hulk is coming somewhere in August, probably beginning of August, and then I'm assuming it'll be a few months until the big box expansion with the campaign comes out, and that will have Hawkeye and Spider-Woman in it. So, I will do the Hulk episode when Hulk comes out, and then I will wait for the other two, and hopefully by then we'll have some more news about Marvel Champions. <clears throat> And I can maybe do another video. If that's kind of like the end of their first cycle or whatever, then we can cut these vi videos here and move on. But as it is, we've played 10 games. And we're going to do three separate ways to calculate. So the first one is a combination of turns and outcome. Acceleration on board had no presence at all. I think there was one time I was offered the chance to put Acceleration on the board, and I just chose not to. Uh, acceleration Hazards, I might switch it around for the claw, like where it is here on the thing. Because the things that really matter are turns and outcome threat remaining, and how much damage a, a champion took. So, the first set is about turns and outcome, and we're just going to quickly go over uh, each of the games and how they went. Captain America was a great game. And I'm not sure if it was just, <clears throat> I mean, it really is RNG on what you get for the encounter deck, what you get from your deck, but also about what happened in those videos. I mean, Rhino's deck has a lot of things that like to affect him or how, how often he gets to attack. I'm not including the uh, standard set or the... Uh, bomb scare. Well, I guess bomb scare is important. Um, there weren't very many side schemes besides breaking and taking, which we saw every game, almost. Look at you, Doctor Strange. Um, but yeah, Captain America did really well. Uh, she Hulk also did super well. Now, Black Panther was very close. I think in that video, I thought it was a four turn game, but in editing, it turned out to be five. And the Thor game. I was just praying that I was going to get a hammer throw because, I, if I recall, that would have done it. Uh, Iron Man, Iron Man, I never expected to win quickly because Iron Man needs time to build, but I thought he did very well for what he did. Um, he, like, look how much health he racked up at the end there. I think, I think we had all of our health. Yeah. Uh, Captain Marvel, I did think we would would have won a little faster. Uh, I think Captain Marvel is one of the first, like the th second or third game we played. I think um, Spider Man as well. I I'd lump those two together because that may have been the beginning of the Trials of the Watcher. Spider Man for sure. And when I'm playing, I'm not rushing to the end. I like to take my time and get control and set up. Uh, which was amazing when I played Black Widow, but it's not how fast you... You don't win the game fast that way. You know what I mean? I like to have low threat. I like to have almost no threat on as possible, depending on what uh, hero I'm playing, unless I have a card that easily clears three or four or something like that. Uh, Miss Marvel was my low point, um, and I'm saying that over Doctor Strange. I poorly played her, poorly managed her, I felt like I had understood how to play her, but clearly I, I, I really didn't. Um, in the end, I just went with... Uh, I think the best thing I could do each turn. Um, and and it, I didn't fail, um, like we're going to talk about Doctor Strange, but yeah. Now, speaking of Doctor Strange, I felt I, like I was doing really well, but I really should have played into his mechanics about... Uh, cycling through his uh, his invocation deck. I 
feel like it would almost be a completely different game if I had. And yes, I did. I could have continued and won if I didn't draw advance. I do understand that. That's just Marvel Champions. I mean, like any card game, I took the risk um, that it could be drawn. I, I felt safe at the time. Uh, but as you see, I went two over. Seven of seven is end of game. Eight of seven is end of game. So it's just how it is. I had a lot of fun with Doctor Strange. And <clears throat> I felt like a lot of his good tools were at the bottom of our deck. It doesn't affect how I played. I feel like I had a goal in mind and I tried to go for it. And... Ultimately, I lost. And as you can see, a lose automatically puts you at the bottom of the table. You could have done better in every other situation. Like, he probably would have been a turn five win with uh, probably a decent amount of threat and probably full health. I probably should have taken a few hits because I had there was a bunch of cards in his deck that were heal to deal to damage or <clears throat> you get bonuses for defending, things like that. So... But yeah, uh, let's click. Here's my mouse. We're going to click. And now we're going to who was able to deal the most amount of threat and win. So Miss Marvel came out top. It was really easy for Miss Marvel because she had the... Uh, is it an upgrade? No, attachment? The one that... She had both of them out. The one where her events deal or uh, remove additional threat. And deal additional damage. She had both of them. So I think in in the last turn. I removed five threat. I think at least. In one go. Just because I could. And I, I think that's something. That I didn't start thinking about. Until. The later plays. I didn't think about. Oh I can affect the end score. And still win. Um, which I'm definitely going to do for claw. I'm not going to redo any of these matches as much as I'd love to go back and do Spider-Man and Doctor Strange and Miss Marvel probably. Um, I'd even want to try Black Widow. I just had so much fun with Doctor Strange and Black Widow. Probably because they're newest and it was my second time playing Black Widow and first time playing Doctor Strange. And starter decks, I didn't, I can't tweak them. Um, and I wanted, I didn't want to know exactly what was in the deck. Like I had seen the cards, I just I did not commit them to memory. Um, so seeing Miss Marvel at top, that's great. One thing I forgot to do with Miss Marvel is I think I only used her, the those two uh, aforementioned cards, I only used those on her events that were Miss Marvel events. If If I recall, you can use them on any event. And I don't think... I was in that mindset when I was playing with Marvel that I can play a separate event and use those cards on those events. And that Miss Marvel can bring back, I think, any event. It doesn't have to be a Miss Marvel card. I could be wrong. Editor me will throw it up somewhere. Top left, top bottom. I don't know. But yeah. Iron Man's always been good about dealing with threat. Uh, he has multiple ways to do that. Especially, with, he's got his helmet that does one a turn. The minute you have the helmet, you're you're removing one threat a turn regardless. No matter what you're doing. Like, why wouldn't you activate it? And Iron Man's so good at getting rid of confused and uh, stunned. Because if 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 I recall, his, his uh, helmet does say thwart. Like, it's a thwart action. And his gauntlets are attack actions. So, those would cancel out the moves so uh yeah and then it's good to see black widow up there she had a lot of ways to deal with threat as well one of my favorite cards i think it's called covert ops and if if i recall it could be used in both uh natasha and black widow modes so our alter ego hero uh, captain america just overall good um if i had to say like the most overall person was probably Captain Mar or Captain America. Um, Captain Marvel and Spider-Man also tied Captain America for amounts of threat remaining, and I just put them in order of how much health was re remaining on each of them. So, and Spider-Man took one extra turn, so that's why Captain Marvel is above there. Uh, Black Panther, 
Black Panther was four or five. Could have been. Could have been better. It's just how the situation went. Uh, and then She Hulk, Thor. Uh, we're cutting it pretty close. If I re- if I recall, it was like you had to win those turns, kind of games. And then Doctor Strange, of course, got advanced out. Can we have a little uh, a little uh, advance uh, <laughs> Red Skull somewhere on the screen, maybe? All right. And then last but not least is who took the least amount of damage? Who was able to <clears throat> win? Maybe no. <laughs> I I took out the win just so Doctor Strange could have some time in the sun. Because uh, I feel like he would have won with very little damage on him if we had got that far. So, Doctor Strange took no damage. But Captain America and Black Panther, which is kind of thematic and funny, uh, if you watch the Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh, they equaled out <clears throat> with 8 of 11. They have similar stats and fight in different ways, but it's great. Black Widow did a very good job. Her synth suit is just amazing. And Miss Marvel, She-Hulk. Yeah, I don't remember having... I don't even remember if I recovered with either of them. Definitely Miss Marvel, I'm pretty sure I did. But yeah. Spider-Man, did I even have Aunt May? I don't remember. That's ten games ago, and I haven't rewatched the footage since. Iron Man, I completely understand, because once you're in Iron Man mode, you just kind of want to stay in Iron Man mode. And uh, you get more done if you don't defend. <laughs> and isn't it kind of Iron Man that he gets beat to crap and then has to rebuild his next set of armor even better than the last one? And then Thor, Thor's kind of in the same boat. Thor just takes a bunch of damage. He's like, I'll recover later. I'm going to win. You know what I mean? So Thor took the most damage. Uh, Yeah. And that's that's that. That's the end of the slideshow. So I will be doing these again for Claw. And expect those videos soonish. Soonish. Yeah. (laughs) All right, everybody. I've been Shadow Slayer X. Please give me all your tips and tricks about dealing with Claw, uh, with all the heroes, please. And, uh, cause we are still on starter decks. So yeah, please help me, help me. <laughs> and, uh, we'll see you next time. Goodbye everybody.